name of this episode is in the driver's seat this starts off as the end of last episode which was Mackenzie's arrival Kate a hug as you can see here and to greet people and say hello but you know who she didn't greet and didn't speak to Cheyenne yeah that's a great way to start off uh, this freaking vacation Cheyenne says that Mackenzie came in the house and she didn't say anything to her she said well if you want to be stank I'm gonna be stank right along with you so Mackenzie's stank attitude is if people aren't going to jump up and hug me I'm not gonna jump up and hug them girl you're coming to a place where you were not so you should greet everybody Mackenzie's standoffish behavior towards Cheyenne sets the tone and it's nothing but tension city in there so although Mackenzie was being a rude biatch her boyfriend Cassanio which took me at least 20 times to get his name right but Cassanio was being respectful he was going around saying hello to everyone introducing himself Jade thought that Cassanio's demeanor and the way that he acted when he came in and greeted everybody was very refreshing and she liked his energy Jade however denotes the tension in the room Mackenzie is here having a conversation with Tyler and she's telling him everything that happened. Tyler encourages Mackenzie to explain to Cheyenne what she's learned in two years, the progress she's made, etc. Cheyenne tells the group that they're going to be dune buggying. I'm not exactly sure why she's covering her face here, but Mackenzie decided, I doubt it was Cassanio, but Mackenzie decided that she's not going dune buggying with this group. She needs to find her place in this house, whatever the hell that means. So Corey says he notices the isolation and he doesn't like it one bit. It really needs to be resolved for the sake of the group. Everybody leaves to do the activity. At this doom buggying thing, y'all thought they were just going to get on these rides and ride around. Come on now. By now, you know that they're going to have about two workshops per episode, which I personally think is overkill. But what do I know? I'm not a freaking MTV executive now, am I? They get to the destination on the beach. And of course, Makaya is there with Dr. Mike. You people do not let these folks breathe for one day without sharing your oxygen. And I don't understand it. I really don't. I really don't understand it. The workshop that they're doing right now is called In the Driver's Seat. It's basically going to explore the relationship dynamics of each couple through role reversal. Each person is going to act like their partner. So Jade as Sean says that she's intimidating. She expects a lot and sometimes makes him feel like less than a man and feels like she talks down to him and is abrasive. Jade, sometimes you're mean. Jade says she realized after she had an argument with herself as Sean that she needs to freaking chill. So Sean as Jade says, F you for using drugs and hiding it from me. You're a piece of crap. And F you for thinking that I I don't give a crap or see the effort that you put into your recovery. I thought you would know the empathy that I have for your situation after everything that she's dealt with in her life. She says that she would say, if you love me, you're going to stop treating me this way. If you don't love me, then leave. Dr. Mike was egging on some of these comments and I did not like that. Let these men and women say what they want to say. Stop adding to the conversation. Let them say what they need to say. I understand you're supposed to be the guide and the coach and all. But let them say what they need to say. Sean says this exercise is enabling them to vent and say some stuff they might not want to say to their partner's face. And he says that it feels good to release it off his chest. So Zach says Corey is up next. He's about to get his popcorn out. Zach, you and your perfect mother freaking girlfriend, y'all were boring. Okay, I can just skip ahead. I can skip ahead to Cheyenne and Zach. They're freaking perfect. They have no faults. Oh my God, you don't do enough work in the house. Oh my God, your potential could be so much better. Oh my God, both of you shut up. Y'all are so fake, okay? Y'all both get on my damn nerves. I didn't have much to say about Cheyenne and um Zach because they they're just they just want to make themselves seem so freaking perfect on television. And I know y'all not perfect and I know y'all are liars, but I'm not going to go back there with the shooting situation. We'll leave that alone for now. So Zach says, as Cheyenne, I want you to stop wearing the draws in the relationship. Do you know what draws means? How many of y'all are from the South? So if you're from the South, then you understand what he said don't make no sense. Draws are underwear. They're not gender specific. A man can wear draws. A lady can wear draws. Draws are underwear. So when Zach says, I want you to stop wearing draws in the relationship, what Zach really wanted to say, I want you to stop wearing the dress in the relationship. I want you to stop wearing the panties. Listen, come come go with me. Come go with me. That's basically what he was saying. The opposite of wearing the pants. You got me? That's what he meant. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I was looking at him like, mother effer, we all wear drawers. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people don't, but I'm just saying. Now we're up to Cheyenne as Zach, and she says, you don't appreciate the things I do. You don't do things around the house. You work too much. You work too much, girl. You work, that's your problem. You work too much. 
you know what? I'm about to turn this. I'm about to close this laptop and I'm about to end this recap because I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad. Cheyenne continues. You don't know how to put your phone down. You need to be quiet. This did I did they really say you need to be quiet? Girl, I wrote those notes. So I'm assuming that's what it said. Anyway, Cheyenne says she learned by this exercise. See Zach's perspective. I learned that y'all are really trying to portray perfect and you're sickening your liars and I don't like you. Hey, that's what I learned. This is what I learned. Cheyenne claims to be dominant and controlling. And I believe that. That's the part I do believe. I believe that part. And um, she says that she'll ask Zach a question and then completely answer it for herself. I like how Dr. Mike does sometimes, which is very annoying. Corey is here. Corey's up next. I guess everybody's looking forward to Corey. Do y'all kind of think that this should have been done privately or anyway, let me know how you feel in the comment section. Corey says, as if he's Taylor, he says he really lets himself have it. He says, F you for always hurting me. I tried to trust you. You break the trust and I'm hurt. All this crap you put me through, I'm still hurting from it. And it's not up to you to decide when I recover from that. I need you to love me and be there for me and support me. Put that ring on my finger, okay? And if I don't get my knees met is what, this is the part that Dr. Mike added that nobody, nobody said. He would have never said this. Had Dr. Mike not said this. Dr. Mike says, and if I don't get my needs met, he says, for he says and then I'm gonna have to move on. Damn, that felt good, dog. <laughs> Said the moment he let that out, that yell, the frustration, he doesn't even know why he feels frustrated, but he said there's a lot of emotions going on. So now it's Taylor's turn. Taylor says, and this is her as Corey. Taylor as Corey says, I need you to do more with yourself. I need you to go out and have a social life. We need to have alone time. You need to separate yourself from the kids. Taylor says it was very odd putting herself in Corey's shoes and having a conversation with herself. She says, however, she realizes that maybe they're talking to each other the wrong way. Maybe they need to communicate a bit differently. She says it was good to be in his shoes for once. Tyler says that he does a lot of self-analyzing, all right? And he says that people think that him and Kate are so perfect. He knows for a fact what the issues are that they need to work on. So this is Tyler as Kate. A lot of questions. The questions start, do you have any idea what I went through as a kid? Do you have any idea what I go through on a day-to-day -day basis to keep my mental health in check? Do you have any idea how I feel when you freak out and get angry and do not control your own crap? Do you have any idea how I feel? So Tyler says, so F you for not controlling your anger and your emotions. F you for making me feel unworthy. I need you to start taking control of your anger, bringing it down and being a little bit more compassionate with my mental health journey. And then Mike says, cause if you don't, I'll find someone that will is how Tyler ends that. Tyler says he hopes that Kate doesn't feel that way. He was kind of talking crap to himself, but that was not the exercise Tyler. And I picked up on that cause you're not paying attention cause you're not listening. You're not following instruction. This is the problem with you guys. You all, all of y'all are having communication issues because you know why? You don't listen. You don't listen. The exercise was not to talk crap to yourself for the hell of it. The exercise was to act like Kate. Like, what would she say? And there were some things I was like, I know Kate wouldn't say that to him. So Kate, as Tyler says, we need to figure out a solution so we can have quality time at least once a month. It's our own fault that we aren't making these connections and making things happen. And you don't communicate hard things sometimes. You need to open your mouth. Putting herself in Tyler's shoes really helped her to understand that maybe there are things that she needs to do differently. Brings a new light to different aspects of their relationship. It was difficult, but it was good. We're up to Taylor and Macy. Cause we're not moving on until I get through this. And I'm gonna try my best not to have a 30 minute video, but Ciao. Taylor as Macy is saying, screw you for letting it all build up and erupt. You have no idea what it's been like for me. It's a, it's a lonely road. When you let things build up and don't speak on it, it makes me feel small. And then he says, I need you to start communicating with me more. If I don't get that and see, this is the part again, Dr. Mike egged that part on. The part that he egged on was if I don't get that, I'm gonna need you to shut up, Dr. Mike. You making me mad, Dr. Mike, all right? Dr. Mike chimes in, if I don't get that, and then Taylor says, I'll put walls up and shut down. So Taylor says this was a difficult exercise, making him feel vulnerable, but an interesting view. And Taylor says him and Macy have been together so long, it is so easy to yell at himself from Macy's perspective. We get up to Macy and Macy says, this is Macy as Taylor. We could get more intimate if you would come to bed at the same time as me. Macy, that could pose a problem, lady. Okay, I know how it is to go to bed late. I know, I be, I'm, a, I'm a night owl and I'd be a late, okay? But anyway, Macy says she doesn't know this is hard. So 
Micaiah says, you know, this means that we have to dig deeper because there's a reason why this is difficult for you. Because Macy really couldn't think of any way that Taylor would talk to her, which is very sad. On the other side of that, y'all noticed that Taylor said that he can literally, like, he can, he been with her so long, he can tell you exactly what she would say to him. And when it came to Macy, she didn't know what to say. Macy says that they both, her and Taylor, were correct when they said they had to work on communication. Part of the reason why this exercise was so difficult is because they lack communication. So everybody gets back to the house and they're eating and Tyler, you don't like onions. Your taste buds are freaking immature. What the hell? Anyway, Corey says that he can tell that Cheyenne is either irritated or angry because she's being quiet. Macy and Taylor actually have a private meeting with Dr. Mike and it comes out that Taylor one time told Macy that he would not want their daughter to grow up and be a mother like Macy is. Why the hell would you say something so rude and insensitive? I don't care what Macy said to you. I don't care how angry you were. Why would you say something like that? Why would you question a woman's motherhood? That is the deepest knife you can do to cut a woman. Are you freaking kidding me? And what makes her a bad mother? being involved in her kids' lives. Oh God, what a terrible mother she is. You know what, Taylor, don't ever say that again. So Dr. Mike asks Macy, has he tried to heal the wound? Macy says, although she knows that he didn't mean it, that doesn't mean it didn't hurt. Macy says it makes her feel worthless, but she knows it's not true or how he really feels. So why did he say it, Macy? Because out of your mouth, the heart speaketh. I don't really care what nobody says. Whatever you say out of your mouth, you mean it. You mean it. That's why you said it. In order for you to say something, you have to think about it first. Dr. Mike basically gets to the point where he says, the thing that attracted you to Taylor as a loving provider to your kid is now probably the thing that's driving a wedge between the two of you. And Macy says she never thought about that. Dr. Mike says that's how it is in relationships. You know, the parenting aspect, they're not gonna, obviously they're not gonna get rid of that. And he says that you need to tell Taylor what you need from him. Dr. Mike, you asked Macy, what she needs from Taylor, and you didn't even give her a chance to answer, you just answered for her. Why are you doing that? She never got to answer, y'all. Then he goes to freaking Taylor and asks him what does he need from Macy, and he says for Macy to focus on the things that he's done as opposed to the things that he hasn't. So Dr. Mike gives the two of these people homework assignment, and the homework assignment is to go on a little date, a little dating date, and do not talk about these children. Do not talk about baby's kids, okay? Do not, do not talk about them, do not mention them, do not talk about them, just go and have fun. That's the homework. Macy and Taylor go on a date? What kind of mother freaking muddy volcano pool date is this? This a date? This is the date? No dinner, no, even the crusty people who married at first sight had real dates, and they were crusty. They deserve to be in a mud pit. They deserve to be in a volcano. Not, not, not with lava. I'm just saying in a volcano with mud. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. This is where they went to, even if y'all went to a spa and y'all got muddy, I probably wouldn't hate it as much because at least at a spa, y'all can take showers. So y'all walked all the way back to the hotel muddy? Yeah, I, and I even thought at the end of the scene, they would have, you know, have been able to take a shower on the premises and then have a dinner. No, it ends with them in the mother freaking mud, y'all. What a crappy date. I will say they did look like they were having fun though. This is just my own personal feelings. Mackenzie is just basically telling us, look, I cannot go on much longer. It's just disrespectful not to address the problem and apologize to Cheyenne. When Cheyenne is by the pool, first of all, before before she even gets by the pool with, with Cheyenne, Cheyenne is talking to the other people. Um, I believe it was Corey and Taylor, they're in the pool. And she's like, I'm freaking irritated. The fact that Mackenzie ran around talking to everybody else except her and now she's just ignoring her as just straight disrespectful. And now she's at the point where she don't even want to talk to her because she has a stank attitude. All of a sudden, you know, Cheyenne's sitting at the pool and now they're talking. They're not talking. Uh, Mackenzie's doing majority of the talking. Talk, 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 talk. And girl, that squeaky ass voice, girl, I can't with this voice. She's over here like, I apologize for everything I did for you, the way your family was hurt. She made the mistake of telling Cheyenne, oh, I didn't know that your family got hurt. Now, whether it was true or not, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. Okay, I don't, dis but honestly, I don't think Mackenzie's lying because when she told the story initially, like I said, her and Cheyenne's story both matched up. Exactly. She told the same freaking story Cheyenne told. So I don't see why she would lie about this part. That's dumb. She's steady trying to apologize. Cheyenne over here with her nose in the air. She ain't trying to hear that. Cheyenne, I thought the only issue you wanted was an apology. You wanted her to talk to you, which she's doing. You wanted her to apologize, which she's doing. And now you're holding on to the fact that She's claiming she didn't know that your family was hurt or your family was harassed over this situation. Now that's a dagger in your side. Girl, if you don't shut the freaking hell up, you got me going to Mackenzie's side? 
Are you stupid? Anyway, this is how the recap's gonna end because that's how it ended with Cheyenne still acting stank. She don't want to accept no apologies. Oh, and then wait, and then oh, and you know what? Before I leave here, before I leave here, let me let's not forget. Cheyenne also says to Mackenzie, you know, you're dating a black man now. Yep, y'all have kids. Your kids are gonna be black. So I hope you learn then too, girl. You just why are you going there? Why you went there? Golly, as you can see, I'm black, and I don't think she needed to go there. Golly, the girl was trying to apologize. That is the end of this recap. I will try to get them shorter. I see other uh, YouTubers, they be doing 10 minutes. I don't know how the hell y'all get this 45-minute show down to 10 minutes. I'm not judging. I'm admiring. I'm not talking negatively. I'm admiring the fact that you guys can do that, and I'm striving to be like you one day, okay? I promise. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.